day 18 on the Florida Trail. I tell you, I wake up every morning excited to start the new day and see where it takes me. Today, I'm hoping to get to Scott's Road. I mean, I have to get to Scott's Road, which is 10 miles away. And then it's bike riding after that. So that'll be nice to cover some ground. This trail at the beginning here is pretty rough. There's blazes I see, but no defined pathway. So this is proving interesting already. But it follows the Econ Fina Creek, so that's pretty special. But yeah, do you see a pathway? I do not. Unless it's more over here. I do enjoy seeing the mushrooms that pop up everywhere. See, there's my blazes, but there is no defined pathway. Oh, I tell you. I know I've said this in the past, and I'm sure I'll say it again in the future, just because I'm so appalled by it. But Florida, what is going on? Your trash on your highways are just terrible on the roadways. I don't know, mom thinks that somebody threw out their cup right in front of us or else um, the wind picked it up or something. But it got, a cup got stuck to my bicycle tire. <laughs> like, that's how bad it is. I'm thinking that the fine I see is only $100 for littering. And where I come from, it's $5,000. So I don't know if that would make a difference but just appalling all the trash. This Econ Fina area is really got lots to do here. It's pretty special. Nice little shelter, picnic table, right by a river. Just lovely. I would recommend coming here. This isn't obviously in the wilderness. <laughs> this is really nice. Wow. Very pretty. Now this is what I'm talking about. Nice pathway <laughs> defined. Things are looking hopeful. Just a random picnic table out in the middle somewhere. This isn't where the trail goes, but I'm gonna go down here anyways, since it's right here. Wow, your own private beach? Don't know that I would wanna swim in here. How many of you would swim in this river? Let me know. <laughs> It looks very inviting. You can get all different kinds of turkey tail markings. But people, if you find this in the wild, very, very healthy for you. Very medicinal, make a tea with it. That nice trail didn't last long. But at least there's a blaze. All right, I found a blaze. It's been a while. Some nice people built me a bridge. Thank you. I sure would not want to be in Florida during a hurricane. You can just see the destruction that it does. I can handle those guys. They're not too scary. 
Isaac was weaned at three years of age, which was typical for people in Bible times. And then they had a big party. Well, Ishmael was jealous of his half-brother, and he would mock him and taunt him a lot. Sarah got tired of it and told Abraham to send Ishmael and his mother Hagar away. She did not like the teasing, and she for sure did not want Ishmael to have any of the inheritance. Massive tree. Well, this broke Abraham's heart because this was his son and the one whom he had thought would be the heir. Remember, instead of trusting God, he took things into his own hands and produced this child with Sarah's slave. God encouraged Abraham to listen to Sarah and send him away, but he promised to make a great nation out of this son as well. So early in the morning, Abraham loaded Hagar and her son with food and water. They say that the water skin could hold three gallons of water and sent them away. Every once in a while, you get a glimpse of the river. Very nice. They wandered around in the wilderness of Beersheba. She was probably trying to find her way back to Egypt, but got lost. Well, their water supply ran out and her son must have had it real bad because she set him under a shrub and then she went quite a ways away from him because she did not want to watch him die. He was 17 years old. One of these obstacles. Ah, oh, no problem. Hagar lifted up her voice to God and wept. He heard the voice of her son and he said to Hagar, Fear not, I have heard the voice of the lad where he is. Now take the lad by the hand and I will make a great nation of him. This looks a little bit precarious. Ooh, whoa, that is a drop off. <laughs> okay. But how gorgeous from up here. That's where I'm standing is right along this edge. It could slough off at any second. <laughs> okay. Then God opened her eyes and there was a well. It was probably hidden because back in those times, they covered wells with rocks so that animals could not fall into them. She gave the boy a drink and they were revived. It sounds like they lived in the wilderness and Ishmael became an archer and thus a provider. Hagar got him a wife from Egypt. And so the Arab nation was started. Seventeen years went by before God spoke to Abraham again. He told Abraham to take Isaac and offer him as a sacrifice. Abraham didn't know it at the time, but God was testing him. This is definitely pretty along here. Enjoying this very much in the cool of the shade. Lovely pass by a river. God told Abraham to go to Mount Moriah and he would show him which mountain to offer the sacrifice on. It was a three day journey and you'll be interested to know that Mount Moriah is where present day Jerusalem is. So Abraham awoke early and got Isaac and two servants and the fire and wood that they would need. He didn't question God, he just followed his command.
getting close to the water now. So nice. They want me to take a left hand turn into the river? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, very nice. An old bridge, but it will do. that bridge. Oh, it's given up the ghost. At least I have a log to cross on. Yeah, it's stable. I can't get enough of this trail. It's made up for the last two days that were so bad. This is absolutely spectacular. This is what I want the trail to be. like an obstacle course and a scenic course. Can't get better. When they got to the vicinity, Abraham had the two servants stay behind, and he put the wood for the burnt offering upon Isaac, very reminiscent of Jesus having to carry his own cross. Whoa, that gets like close to the edge. Let's get back up here. Oh boy, look at this bridge coming up. <laughs> oh, I guess it looks worse than it is. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Very slanted. As long as there's no snakes under the logs, I don't mind going over logs. Isaac finally asks, Father, we have the wood and the fire for the sacrifice, but where is the lamb? And Abraham replied, God will provide the lamb. Just like God provided Jesus as the lamb of sacrifice. Now this bridge looks really great. Good. It's a long drop down there, so be better. When they got to the place, Abraham binds Isaac and lays him on the altar. And with Isaac being 20 years old, he could have easily resisted his aged father. Just like Jesus did not resist 
but gave himself willingly. Then Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay Isaac. The intense suffering and mental anguish that Abraham must have gone through is very similar to Christ's suffering and anguish. There's a lot of downs and ups on this trail today. Certainly not flat Florida, <laughs> but it's very fun. Then God called from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, do not lay your hand on this lad, nor do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then God opened Abraham's eyes, and he saw a ram caught in the thicket by its horns, and he offered that ram as a sacrifice instead of his son. Just like we don't have to die for our sins, Jesus is offered as a sacrifice for us. It was a substitutionary atonement. Then Abraham named the place, the Lord will provide. Then God talks with Abraham and says, because you have been faithful, now I will bless you and multiply you and all the nations of the earth will be blessed because of you. And because of our faithfulness to God's commands, we too will be blessed and will enter the promised land. Not walking by the river anymore for now. So to tie this up, Abraham's natural and supernatural seed, Ishmael and Isaac, both experienced God's testing. Both journey into the unknown at the command of the Lord. Provision is given for both journeys. Both children are brought to the point of death. God intervenes. Parents suddenly see the solution to the situation, a well and a ram. Both receive a promise of divine blessing. God puts us through severe testing times. He has to know that we trust him. Please believe in God and you will have blessings. Just a friendly reminder out in the middle of nowhere that I am on the Florida Trail. I hear water. We got all kinds of bridges on this trail. Narrow ones. But they do the job. What is this? Wow. Fender Bridge. Oh, I saw the sign for that. There's a swinging bridge. Woohoo. Lovely. Volunteers of the Florida Trail Association, Skookum Bridge. There is certainly no lack of water sources for the Florida Trail so far. Lots of lovely water. Uh oh. <laughs> Bridge is in shambles. So we got logs instead. It's okay. More shambled bridge. Oh well, it's still functioning. Since we are following a major river, it makes sense that there's lots of creek crossings.
Now, why did they name this Apple Bridge? But it's a pretty nice one. Cables and all. Whoa, a bit old though. There is actual waterfalls in Florida. Wow. Just a rustic bridge with no name. I had no idea this bridge was up here. Another bouncy one. its name. Two Penny Bridge. This is the trail of the bridges. I haven't even filmed them all. There's been so many. Well, I've done all those bridges, so that must mean I'm almost done. Not long ago, I looked down on my leg and saw a little tick crawling up the leg, and I swiped it off and it would not budge. Thankfully, it hadn't latched on, but that little bugger did not want to leave my leg. And so five minutes later, I looked down and there was another tick on the same leg. This one was a little bigger, but my goodness, those guys are tiny compared to the ones that I'm used to from where I live. So now I have to be paranoid about ticks and snakes. This trail, Ecofina, I am loving ya and leaving ya. So glad to be moving on to something else. Okay, I've covered 15.8 miles today. 10 of that was hiking this morning. It's getting too dark to bike anymore, so I'm done. It's been eh, so nice to get biking after that hard hike. Anyway, if God asked you to give something up, what would you be willing to give up? I'll see you tomorrow.